Hello and welcome to this football chit chat show where we meet with a lot of Indian footballers, those who have played in the past and those who are involved in some way or the other with the clubs. Today we have one very, very famous footballer and uh, he has come from the, the valleys, I mean from Kashmir and he has made a name for himself. Welcome Mr. Spark, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Uh... It's a pleasure to join you. I think uh, we are talking after very long, I think. Uh, mm. I have seen you during the Santosh Trophy days, I guess. Yeah. And Mondo yeah. days. Long time back. Long time. Uh, Ishvak, uh, we, we, I mean, we want to know your journey from Kashmir to the mainland of Indian football, that is Calcutta. And uh, could you please tell us your story? I mean, in very brief. Well, um, it was by by luck I became a professional or by chance I became actually a professional footballer. I was playing cricket those days and football also simultaneously both. Uh, we used to have a ground close by, so that was the reason we used to play all the sports. And uh, very well it happened actually the, that I represented my state one day in um, uh, under-21 championship where we won North Zone. I was the top scorer. In, in fact, in that tournament, Sunil Chetri was captain in Delhi and I was the captain of uh, JNK. Uh, then uh, once we won that North Zone, we uh, then there was like four zones, five zones, actually four zones and one Central Zone comes to play usually tournament. So it was West Bengal, uh, Goa, JNK, I think Tamil Nadu or some uh, one more team and one more team was there. Uh, where I played, we had an exceptional tournament uh, because all the big name players who used, were in that particular tournament. From West Bengal, there was Mehta, Basim Biswas, all these guys were there. And from Goa, there was players like Alex Ambrose. And I was declared uh, player of the tournament. Uh, to my surprise, uh, I was just enjoying my football that time. We, had, we were very happy that North, we had qualified first time in North Zone. We are beating teams like Punjab who are traditionally very strong when it comes to the uh, nationals. So after that, uh, I got offers from all the clubs, Mohan Bagan, East Bengal, Vasco, Salgaonkar and uh, Dempo and, uh, and HAL. Where uh, I discussed with some of my senior players and all that, I told them, they said, it's better to go to HAL, you might get a uh, playing time more there. I think that was a very, very crucial point in our career. We took a decision. We went a less famous team. Uh, we had definitely, I got more chance to play. In my first year only, I got a call from national team camp. Where in Olympic on my debut, I scored. And then uh, I moved to, uh, in very next year, I moved to Dempo's. And Dempo, uh, 2003 onwards, was like one of the strongest team till 2008. Uh, seven, eight uh, in Indian League, Indian I League, and Indian Domestic League. So I was uh, very fortunate enough to be in a good team at right time and right, you know, right time for me. Where I got called for senior India also after that. And then in 2007, uh, I moved to uh, Mohan Bagan, and that is where I got uh, introduced to. Uh, uh, Madan uh, football, which was uh, the best thing, uh, you know, like always in Kashmir or anywhere other, uh, there are different states and people wish and dream to play for these big clubs because they are the pioneer clubs of Indian football. So, and we, I only had heard about him and, uh, and then finally I got chance to play for them. And uh, yeah, being uh, not only to play and captain one of the top teams. So, did you ever ever realize in your prime time in in Kashmir, while staying in Kashmir, Srinagar, that you would able be you would be able to go to Calcutta or to Dempo? You know, did you have that dream? I they were dream clubs, of course, but I never in my wildest dream, I had thought that I will be playing for them one day. 
so uh, they were all like my dad used to talk about hey, there are big clubs mohan bagan is bengal they are mohammedan sporting they are big clubs then uh, one of my neighbor had gone to nepo and represented there and there and we used to look, you know like he was a, like a hero for us who oh, he played in goa and former indian captain abdul majid kokru he was playing for mohan bagan so to meet them was like a privilege uh, live apart playing for the club so uh, yeah, it was like uh, by god's grace i can say why it took uh, 20 years uh, after abdul majid played uh, for mohan bagan in the eight, mid 80s 86 85 i think he was with mohan bagan it took 20 years for another kashmiri footballer like you or meraj to come into the uh, common platform of india indian football uh, really un- it's really unfortunate we all know kashmir is going you know like uh, political lot of turmoil is there and uh, um, it if it it has its effect it has its effect on all sectors and uh, sports is one of them football is one of them i still remember when i started playing there were a lot of grounds to play and we used to go and play barefoot football and all that just for fun and i feel like had there been more infrastructure we kashmir jammu and kashmir would have produced more players but unfortunately we are way way behind uh, when it comes to the infrastructure we in recent years we had got one astro turf ground uh, where teams train uh, real kashmir play home matches and that's it we have we have some other other grounds unfortunately never have been taken care and they are not in playing con- condition recently government has upgraded bakshi stadium i think you will be knowing uh, very well bakshi stadium or bakshi stadium uh, but uh, it's not ready yet i hope it will be sooner or later it will be ready all all we need is uh, more uh, grounds in you know like the infrastructure if they there are like they can upgrade there are grounds available in localities they just need to be upgraded i hope uh, government uh, help you know especially the sports council will do that not just do the fillings and then leave you cannot play just you know there is if there is no grass you can play ultimately all the players are playing on uh, training on that only but you need infrastructure to produce more players which we lack uh, like very much so the first time when you landed in calcutta uh, wearing a mohan bagan jersey uh, what was your experience how was the feeling it's amazing you know like uh, i never expected to for training there will be so much so many people i never expected that people will be knowing everything about me uh, when they met me they know my name where i come from and where i played uh, all the fans they will tell you welcome and everything and uh, to my surprise then uh, locally the stadium was packed before we around uh, we arrived in ground so uh, you know like uh, amazing feeling you know you cannot describe such feelings as player like because that's what you dream for and then you get that kind of response that kind of fan following which is absolutely brilliant can you i mean uh, tell us the name of the coach uh, the first coach that you had in your career in your playing career who had motivated you i think uh, they, they in initial stages there were only heroes for me like uh, of my locality who have represented some of them have represented school india one of them have represented junior india one's name is said the other name is zohur harun who had represented school india and <coughs> was playing was a good good footballer so the first impact and one of my cousin who was a footballer uh, mustafa so so the the first impact on my life was from them because uh, uh, i because they were the people first motivated me to play because we used to see them at evening in a ground to play yes then there were coaches like uh, satpal singh from jammu when i was small 
Uh, there were these inter-school coaches, which I will never forget, you know, like who really motivated us because inter-school used to be for us the biggest tournament by that time. You know, we the, that rivalry between schools and all that. And then came to the main coaches like Abdul Majid Kokru, who had become coach by then. And uh, Mohamed Yusuf Dar, again, former uh, international. He was the coach. And one more international is Mohamed Shafinari. I'm talking about Indian JNK. So these were few coaches like who had uh, you know, like uh, a vital role to play in my upbringing of football, I will say, when I was a uh, budding footballer. Can you recall any one incident uh, in Calcutta uh, while, you know, while you were playing for Mohan Bagan that still gives you some kind of merriment, some kind of happiness? Oh. I think it was my first proper derby. And I had returned from injury and uh, where I was playing with, with you know, like again, is, uh, East Bengal was full of national team players. Uh, so I it, it ended in 1-1 one, one draw, I think, uh, uh, where I got man of the match, uh, which it was I league match. I think uh, that's fantastic. And then second, I should mention where again I got a joint man of the match uh, for uh, Bayern Munich match. Uh, those two moments are like uh, derby match for everyone you know like is is a dream. And and to get a man of the match which was my actual start, first start of the derby. Like I had played derby but on um, uh, in Kolkata League which I came as sub in my first and when I properly started my first derby, I got the man of the match, which was, uh, you know, like uh, I was really happy uh, because you know that Boro match is everything in Kolkata. Uh, people live and die for that. <laughs> Ishwak, uh, one thing that I have been asking a lot of former players and a lot of players that have played in Calcutta, I mean, Mohan Bagan East Bengal derby matches are good for the publicity, but has Calcutta football just been restricted, has been restricted between these two clubs? Unfortunately, to ex to some extent, yes. You know, like I am only few of the lucky players who are, who have played for all the three big clubs. And I am, I cannot thank Allah more that I have represented Mohammedan also. I still remember when we beat this Bangladesh club in IFA Shield when I was playing for Mohammedan. In fact, where Miraj also scored the goal. Uh, though that, that Bangladesh club beat, uh, had beaten uh, Mohan Bagani's Bengal, both the teams. And, uh, and the best part was whole Calcutta was behind us uh, because they wanted that revenge. And all of a sudden, East Bengal, Mohan Bagan supporters, some of them became the uh, Mohammedan supporters. So, uh, the Mohammedan has a, a rich history, which to some, I agree with you to some extent, um, it has been restricted to only these two clubs. You have which played is a in I League. Unfortunate for me. Yeah, you, you had played in I League and now you also been seen in the dugout of uh, Kerala Blasters in the ISL. So, two different experiences. Can you just share your experience as in uh, I League and I said? Um, uh, I think the infrastructures are two different things where we can mainly compare. Like we, ISL made us, because I played myself ISL also, so uh, made us more like feel like more professionals where we got a good basic facilities like good grounds and good dressing rooms and everything. I think that that that's the huge change, and I think the publicity, the players got the media. How much media can do and can play a big role? Like ISL made some of the young players huge stars. You know, I think I think that that is good thing. Uh, uh, it 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 one good thing. It is uh, it made football to go a little bit. Uh, to the other states where football was not there through the TV. I'm not saying through the 
clubs and all that. Um, but there was a charm of I, I League also. We used to have a proper league uh, where we used to play a full season, two, one and a half months used to be a pre-season. Uh, and I'm very glad that ISL is thinking because I am the part of technical committee also. So ISL is also thinking the on the same lines where they want to have three rounds of matches now. They want to give, you know, like have more matches for, uh, you know, have make this a proper league. And if, if that happens in ISL and more, they add one or one or two more teams. I think that that's going to be good as we have seen Mohan Bagan already entering in uh, ISL. Uh, it's a it's a huge step for ISL. It's a good thing for Indian football. And I hope, inshallah, sooner or later we see East Bengal also in ISL because I am a fan of the both, both of these clubs. And I think uh, without them, the Indian football is incomplete because the, the contribution they have done to Indian football is amazing and huge and nobody can deny that. And uh, and once they will be in ISL, it's good for win-win situation for everyone. It's good for ISL, good publicity for ISL. It's good for East Bengal, Mohan Bagan, they can, because they can play the mainstream football again, uh, which is which is good. Federation recently passed the foreign players rule 3 plus 1 with Asian 1 recruitment that a club can hire. I mean, do you think uh, without being, I mean, criticizing or without being negative, you're talking about uh, from the analytical point of view, how far the Indian players are getting chances in the in these leagues, in I-League or in ISL, if you talk about this foreign player, 3 plus 1? Yeah, honestly speaking, I have seen coaches where uh, uh, we played like more with the Indian players. I have seen uh, Goa coach Lovero where he started with nine Indians. Uh, we have started with uh, sometimes with nine Indians as well. And because uh, we were uh, foreigners were available, but uh, we did not want to take to take chance to take chance. But uh, we were equally sure of Indian players. I think if Indian players have ability, so they will get their chance. I believe you cannot make an average player to play a good football by reducing foreigner. You, you understand? Sunil Chetri, for example, I give an example. He is playing striker. He, when he was in Mumbai the City, he was playing striker there also. When he, was, when he went to Bangalore, he was playing striker there also. And when he was in I League, he was playing striker that time also, even though teams used to always prefer to hire two striker, foreign strikers. So, Mehta Abusan, I give you, defensive midfielder. A lot of foreign teams, a uh, lot of ISL teams want to sign a foreign defensive midfielder. But till Mehta was playing, whether in I League or ISL, he got his place. He was playing uh, in defensive midfield position. So, I think there has to be enough quality also. Uh, it is not, it's a very good thought to have uh, a proper AFC confederation rule, which AFC rule applies. Uh, and that gives the more, I am always in favor of more employment for Indian players, without doubt. I always feel there should be more Indian players in squad. Uh, that is one thing. But when you ask me, whether giving Indian player chance, whether they uh, they can improve, they definitely get, will get the gameplay, which is which I don't have any doubt. But I think uh, uh, if we are doing that, then we should definitely have this in mind that an Indian player should definitely play thirty to forty matches minimum in a season, which is one of the reason. I feel we are right now way behind. Even the club officials, they are not having faith in the Indian coaches. As a result of which, there may be a lot of AFC courses, A license, B license. 
but uh, the clubs are not really putting their faith on the homegrown coaches as a result of which you know see a lot of um, uh, foreign coaches spanish coaches trend is going on right now in indian football um, um there has it it works both ways like uh, uh, coaches have to earn their place and uh, how federation is thinking of to improve rest of the football like thinking of the referees they should have courses everything thinking for the young players how they can improve we should send national team for uh, away you know like international trips so that they can get exposure i think it's federation's responsibility to look coaching department which they are i heard they are already doing to encourage coaches and uh, uh identify uh, you know like uh, new coaches and all that and send them for you know like internship with top clubs i i don't think that indian coaches are far behind now the new generation of coaches are educated and have played the game and they understand the game and um, more importantly you know like the willingness to uh develop themselves not to be Uh, you know they are more liberal type of coaches which is good thing they listen to players they they are willing to um, you know develop their coaching abilities uh, it is not that they think that they have played highest level and they will become good coaches and uh, which is good there are a lot of coaches you know like uh, a, a full generation of former national team players are have done a license and are doing the job right now i think it's 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 now on them uh you know to to make the club owners believe that indian coaches can do that and indian co- and all the club owners and club officials um uh, have to be little bit biased also to give them chance thank you ishfaq for joining with us today in this show and wish you all the best thank you bye it's always pleasure uh, to talk to you thank you